on the one hand, we have um, sort of cosmic history writ small in, in, in these, these um, religious holidays. Um, but then history just keeps going, and so the, the cycle of the year um, keeps going. And I think that's why I find spring scary, is that you have this holiday that, that sort of tells you that everything's okay, and then the year keeps going. Um, <clears throat> so um, cosmic history does or doesn't. I, we don't know. We can't know. Um, so the first, uh, I just wanted to read a couple poems, neither by me. One you will all know, and I used to have memorized and should still, but do not, do not any longer. Um, God's Grandeur by Gerard Manley Hopkins. Um, and I think you'll see why I'm reading this poem. And then I'm going to read a poem by Peter Richards. The world is charged with the grandeur of God. It will flame out like shining from shook foil, it gathers to a greatness like the ooze of oil, crushed. What do men then now, sorry, why do men then now not wreck his rod? Generations have trod, have trod, have trod, and all is seared with trade, bleared, smeared with toil, and wears man's smudge and shares man's smell. The soil is bare now, nor can foot feel being shod, and for all this, nature is never spent. There lives the dearest freshness deep down things, and though the last lights off the black west went, oh, morning, with the brown brink eastward springs, because the Holy Ghost over the bent world broods with warm breast and with awe bright wings. Um, gets, you know, pretty positive there at the end. Um, <clears throat> but most of it is about this trotting and trotting and trotting and searing, blearing and smearing. Um, like Herbert, I feel like uh, Hopkins often ends on this weird, like, up note that is hard to believe, but I, um, I love it anyway. Uh, and then this is a poem by Peter Richards, which is a much more challenging poem, um, but I read it last night coincidentally. And it's called Adam Collects Himself. And this is this, again, idea that <clears throat> the first day after Passover and Easter must be the day of Adam expelled from the garden again, I'm afraid. Once our cries came already broken, came partway down until the all-night stranded circle gleamed with the threat of sweat knowing itself. And for reasons no seer could see, even the pewter sheen cat saucer dip in her hip exists because I would not look away. But now my kingdom, she is cast out like corners in a room. And where there are voices, not ours, dying at stations far off in the flesh, they come to speak on behalf of the room, come to lace the mistrust they hold for each other with the mixture of dust we took for ourselves. My love always lacked truthfulness. I could not love without fearing her death. And yet I longed to love unknowingly without God, which is the revenge of those who know. Okay. Sorry, that, that was a bit <coughs> on the bleak side. Um, I think, though, uh, our first reader will probably turn things around for us. Um, Cody Walker uh, is a lecturer in the English department. Um, his poems have been published in many, many esteemed journals um, in this country and, and internationally. Um, his most recent collection of poems is Shuffle and Breakdown, and you can buy it back there. Uh, and um, Cody is really interested in the theory of, of humor. Would you, is that a way of describing it? Sure. Theories of humor. Um, and I'm hoping that maybe he'll uh, amuse us a little bit uh, since I bummed us out. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Um, yeah, I, I was thinking about doing the opposite and just sort of reading some poems that show that we're not in the clear. Um, maybe, maybe I'll try to do both. 
Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. This is really great. And it's just, it's a testament to how poetry is valued at this university and by this library. So Aaron, thanks so much for setting up all these events. Very cool. Uh, yeah, let's clap, clap for that. Okay, I'm gonna read a few poems. You know, I think I'll begin in the, in the spirit of Hopkins with a prayer of sorts. This is called Prayer. And it has an epigraph, um, it's really more of a header, I guess, that goes like this. Georgi Glouchkov, the first Eastern European to go directly to the NBA, averaged 4.9 points and 3.3 rebounds in one season. He said, I have done nothing for which I should be beaten or hanged. So, prayer. Nor should the small sword be used against Georgie. He shouldn't be bludgeoned or crossbowed. Let the kukri be kept far from his flesh. Let him remain both fingered and toed. A punji steak, pump gun, really too much, as is an incendiary bomb. Rain peace on Georgie. These days are so dark. Om Shanti, God bless, Salam. Maybe keeping in the not yet in the clear mode. This is fireworks, waterworks. Fireworks, waterworks, but mostly air works, allowing you to say things for, let's say, 80 years. Finally, when air doesn't work, earth works. These aren't funny. Um, I, the, the, these next couple of poems go to my, um, my undergraduate poetry workshop. We've been occasionally looking at light verse forms that we've been trying to use for non-light ends. And uh, so these are a couple of poems that take in, uh, the, 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 that address 9-11 and the, uh, the events just after. Um, for the first one, which is called 2001 Through a Glass Darkly, it's, I guess, helpful to remember that Dennis Hastert was the um, Speaker of the House back at this time. And according to this poem, he was always drunk. So, 2001, through a glass darkly. Hastert was plastered. Cheney was lit. Just give me a minute. I'll fall down. Bush with a book, it's best not to look. Trade center, jets enter, all fall down. And on the facing page, snow nor rain. Higgly piggly, name not released as yet, handle the envelopes 20 odd years. Anthrax bacillus spores, paid on delivery, killed him on Saturday, send him your tears. This is a poem called Submission, and it has an epigraph from a no longer extant website called jayskids.com that goes like this. A massive search is underway to locate the children of recently deceased legendary rhythm and blues singer Screamin' Jay Hawkins, who, by his own estimation, fathered 57 children. If you believe you are or know of one of his children, please click on Submission. So. Submission. Hawkins seduced my mom in the fall of 1966. They were watching the TV show Pistols and Petticoats, and they were at this party, and there was a lot of tie stick going around. The next morning, Hawkins took my mom to a voodoo basement where people practiced a lollygmancy, which is a way to predict the future based on the howling of dogs. The voodoo people told her that she would have a boy, and that the boy would swim through troubles like a frantic rabbit and emerge shining and righteous and dry. My cousin's stepfather's ex-girlfriend told me this story. In a lot of ways, it keeps me from killing myself. Abbott and Costello, The Alzheimer's Years. <laughs> Who's on first? My son? I have a son? 
You know, I used to, I, I wrote that poem in my early 30s and I thought it was really funny and now I'm 45 and it's not funny at all, so forget that I even said it. Um, I'm going to read some newer poems now. This is, um, I guess this is an Ars Poetica sort of poem. This is dedicated to my comic fiction class because it deals with the kind of laughter that we've been talking about all semester. It's called The Art of Poetry. I need to read more poems by Kenneth Koch. I misspoke. What I meant to imply before that knife came whizzing by is that my life's become a dangerous joke. Some days it seems there are ten of me, not two. Two I can do. I like the company. The funny thing about poetry is nothing, or nothing I'm privy to. And still I conjure eight selves for applause. There are laws. A skinny man can't eat his fatter kin. An indiscreet secret? It makes us puke. Puke gives us pause. A shelter shouldn't shelter so much rope. If Wendy Cope were listening, no, she's not. This ill-got whatnot's not so hot. It's me, ten chairs, a jacked-up gyroscope. All hail the hangman, curse the cuffed, the cuffed fool. That's old school. The way out's way out rhyme. Not so. I'm running out of time. The laugh's on me. It's constant, loud, and cruel. My uncle in Hepzibah, Georgia, rises from the dead and writes a double clarion. Osama bin Laden ain't no modern man. He a throwback. He go yak yak. Osama bin Laden been forgotten. We got internet, 90 inch TV, he in the sea. You know, I spent the fall writing a, just a lot, a lot, a lot of poems about Herman Cain and Michelle Bachman and Rick Perry, and what am I going to do with those? So um, <laughs> here's, here's one about Mitt Romney. It's called, If I Ever Say Even in My Sleep. <laughs> if I ever say even in my sleep, Mitt Romney, he de bomb, knee me in the nuts, slit my gullet. Murder me with paper cuts. This, uh, I guess this is for Ogden Nash, really. It's called a revision, and it has an epigraph from Harper's Magazine, uh, an issue a few months back. Uh, the November 2011 findings section of Harper's contained this kind of lovely sentence. At a health spa in China, an eel swam up a man's penis. So, revision. I don't mind eels, except as meals, and when they swim up my penis. <laughs> On a similar topic, maybe. A long time ago in Italy, a Portuguese sot pumped up with Madeira paid 70,000 lira to stoop a cup of oxtail stew. Distasteful, but true. This, um, Ken was reading some uh, kind of little short Ars Poetica poems on Friday. Here's one of mine. It's called Terms. Pictures, Luis Tiant, John the Count Montefusco, Vita Blue, Bill Spaceman Lee. Quarterbacks, Jim Zorn, Drew Bledsoe. It's a poem because I said so. This is called Absolute Power Corrupts Absolutely, and it's absolute without the E. <laughs> absolute Power Corrupts Absolutely. I like Andy Kaufman, not the wrestling stuff so much, but some of the stand-up, and on Taxi, of course, as Latka, but what I really like is vodka. I should mention that today is Charles Baudelaire's birthday, so you should raise a glass of spirits to his spirit at some point today. Seasonalia. Summer isn't Joe McCarthy, it's Joe Strummer. Winter isn't Harold Lloyd, it's Harold Pinter. And I'm just going to read a, a, few, uh, a few 
poems for my daughter, about my daughter, inspired by my daughter, and then one quick last thing, and I'll step down. This is, uh, I guess Zia's not here, is she? Is she maybe wondering about it? Okay, she was here on Friday and semi-behaved herself. I, I, I told Aaron afterwards I had no problem bringing my daughter to somebody else's reading, but I sure wasn't going to let her mess up mine. Um, so um, wherever she is, out in the Diag, uh, this is Origin Song for Zia Rosenwake Walker. Littlest walker, can't even crawl, cost us a shilling at the shopping mall. Came with a rattle, came with a shake, banana espresso, wide awake. Stashed in a treetop, fashioned a fall, summons the cops with a pelican call. Sunlight's a goner, moon's on the make, mistakes are Zia for Veronica Lake. If you were to try to hack into my and Polly's UMCU uh, checking account and you got about halfway, you'd hit this security question that, uh, that asks, where's Zia? Which is a question we often ask at home. This is in that spirit. It's called, All the Splendid Babies. All the splendid babies are agog in Prague, but for yours. She's in a lobby in Abu Dhabi. Cradle Song. You're just a baby, and as such may be susceptible to lies and wonder and surprise. Left is hither, hither is yon. Santa Claus has a Santa mask on. Right is backwards, backwards is broken. Baby's first words go unspoken. You're just a dad, sparklet and sad. And I'm you, in training, and I'm gaining. The Self-Styled No Child. The Self-Styled No Child sets his fedora by the menorah. He reads the evening papers by tapers. He washes his galoshes. And when a chill sets in, he strokes his chin, imagines sleep, and wonders if the fire will keep. And when his own child cries, he tries to chime away all time with nursery rhyme. And I'll end with this one, which uh, is not a nursery rhyme, but which does rhyme. And um, it's called the Chickenless Pulled Chicken Blues. If you're interested in chickenless pulled chicken, as you should be, you, sh you can go to Trader Joe's and buy some. Um, I, I, can't, I can't vouch for uh, the product itself, but I love the phrase. The chickenless pulled chicken blues, and let, let me just again say thanks so much for coming. This is really a treat. The chickenless pulled chicken blues. I got the chickenless pulled chicken blues, and I don't think I'm coming back from that. I got the chickenless pulled chicken blues, and I don't think I'm coming back from that. That thing I gave away earlier today for nothing, well, that thing was a welcome mat. You can walk all over my punchlines, baby, but be sure to walk on out the door. You can walk all over my punchlines, baby, but be sure to walk on out the door. I was joking when I said I loved you, and I'm not joking anymore. I'm like a rooster in a hen house after the slaughterman's been by. I'm like a rooster in a hen house after the slaughterman's been by. I'm dropping to my rooster knees and crying, why, why, why? Ain't no chicken when it's chickenless. Ain't no sunshine when it's dark. Ain't no chicken when it's chickenless. Ain't no sunshine when it's dark. I got the chickenless pulled chicken blues, baby in this beat-down trailer park. When you got the chickenless pulled chicken blues, you're both done and you're undone. When you got the chickenless pulled chicken blues, you're both done and you're undone. Now you may think these blues are over, but these blues have just begun. Thank you so much. <laughs>